bad posture. One of the most ubiquitous health problems resulting from our modern way of life, yet simultaneously one of the most neglected. Most of us know that our spinal and shoulder posture especially is suboptimal, but we usually don't see it as a pressing enough issue to take seriously. In fact, if you're watching this video in a chair, you most likely have bad posture right now as I speak. I for one certainly didn't take my posture and mobility seriously throughout my childhood and teenage years as a very active kid. But now in my years of early adulthood, I'm finding that my postural complacency has had serious consequences. Self-improvement sphere is dominated by a focus on muscle gain, strength gain, and perhaps to some extent improving one's cardio. But I'm going to argue that there's a very neglected aspect of fitness that very profoundly can affect our well-being and general health and general functioning in the world. And that is posture and mobility. So in this video, I'm going to document for you my experience of postural issues having far-reaching consequences for my health and well-being so that you can avoid the same mistakes that I've made. Now, this all started for me at 13 years old. As I mentioned, I was a very active athletic kid and I would compete regionally in track and field events, anywhere from 800 meters to the 100 meters. This was my primary sport and something that I loved to do. That is, until at 13 years old, I suffered from a knee injury and had to take months out of training. But during that time, my older brother had just started taking weight training seriously, and so he encouraged me to come along to the gym with him. And after all, I thought, hey, well, if I can't do my standard track training, I can at least establish some deltoids dominance over the field and stop my performance stagnating. And so I went along with my brother and I became a regular gym goer and instantly I was hooked on those puberty enhanced noob gains. Very quickly, going to the gym was no longer about improving my performance on the track. I just wanted to build muscle for the sake of getting strong and being bigger. But very quickly, I ran into a significant obstacle at my gym. You see, my brother and all the people that I followed online were doing epic workout routines, making use of the free weights, the barbells, the dumbbells, the power rack, doing deadlift sessions, squat sessions, bench press. I, of course, wanted to emulate these routines and make some serious gains myself. But as a mere 13 year old, I was not allowed to use free weights at my gym. And this unfortunately was a rule that was rigorously enforced by the gym staff. To use them, you had to be at least 16 years old. So unfortunately, my fate at that gym was to be relegated to a set of resistance machines that weren't even actually lifting a weight sack. You just pressed wires with increasing resistance levels that barely went up high. Now, besides being a problem for my gains, because the resistance, as I said, didn't go up very high. And, you know, after months of training at that gym, I was able to max out all of the machines. Now, at the time, my 13, 14 year old self was only thinking about the progress that I was missing out on by not being allowed to use the free weights. But unknown to me, there was actually a far more serious problem lurking beneath the surface, resulting from these workout routines where I would train five, six days a week at the gym for 20 sets per workout solely using these resistance machines. That serious problem was a postural one. You see, these machines work on a fixed movement pattern, and this is completely different from using free weights. When you do a bench press or a squat or a deadlift or a barbell row, or even better, more functional strongman exercises like farmer's walk or weightlifting exercises like clean and jerk, you're having to stabilize the weight yourself and there is no machinery putting it on a fixed, smooth movement pattern that solely isolates the large muscle groups. This makes them very functional exercises since all of the very small stabilizing muscle groups that most gym goers don't even know the names of, they get worked too in addition to the pecs, the lats, the traps, etc. But on these machines with their nice smooth movement patterns, you don't have to do any of the stabilizing work yourself. Now this could seem like a dream from a bodybuilding perspective. Who doesn't want to isolate the target muscle group to the maximal degree, able to tear down as many muscle fibers as possible and simply exhaust the target muscle without having any concern of being held back by the smaller muscle groups getting fatigued before the larger ones. Now this reasoning makes sense for someone who does the bulk of their training on free weights and so already gets plenty of work for their small stabilizing muscle groups. 
but you run into serious problems if you try and bodybuild solely using those fixed motion pattern resistance machines. On that kind of routine, your large muscle groups, your pecs, your lats, your traps, they get much bigger and stronger and developed. But the small stabilizing muscles, the serratus anterior, the teres major and minor, the rotator cuffs, all of these get seriously neglected and completely underdeveloped. And of course, this inevitably results in serious muscle imbalances. This is a bit like trying to build a skyscraper on a foundation of sand. Whilst the overall structure might look visually very impressive, it fundamentally lacks the structural integrity and foundation in order to have proper stability. This makes it prone to collapsing under pressure, or in our case, severe postural issues. I was certainly no exception to this happening. After maybe a year or even less of going to the gym, I developed this very forward rounded shoulder posture and my shoulder blades would stick out. It was a classic case of winged scapula. This problem was further enhanced by the fact that I took up boxing at around the same time, which of course involves a lot of forward shoulder rotation, which further exacerbates the problem of having rounded shoulders. Now at the time, I was barely even aware of my postural problems. Eventually, I started to notice that my shoulders did seem to round forward a bit after I remember seeing a video from Elliot Hulse from Strength Camp on the topic of shoulder imbalances. I also was aware that my traps were incredibly tight and full of knots, but I hadn't figured out yet that this was because of the way that I was training. But it's kind of ironic that this rule implemented from the gym to prevent young people from getting injured lifting weights actually resulted in me having an injury that would, as we'll see, affect my life long into my adulthood years. So anyway, from 14 years onwards, I was dealing with incredibly tight traps and I did see a physio one time and tried some exercises, although it didn't really help much. But I largely just neglected these issues and swept them under the rug. I wasn't dealing with any significant pain. My symptoms were tolerable. It just didn't seem like a pressing matter to correct. And after a year of training at my first gym, my boxing gym actually created their own weightlifting fitness part of the gym. And so I just started attending there and they had no such silly rules preventing 14 year old me from using free weights. There I was safe from fitness instructors poking their heads around the corner of the gym I was hiding in, trying to get a quick set of side lateral raises in with six kilo dumbbells or simply a quick set of dumbbell overhead press in and telling me that I had to put the weights away and stay relegated to my resistance machines. But the damage to my posture seemed to already be done. And of course, as a school student sitting at a desk for hours every day, still doing boxing, still doing a lot of weight training and not stretching, the problems were still gradually exacerbating. Eventually, it got to the point where if I would move my shoulder in a certain way, I would feel this tension build up in what felt like a tendon in my armpit. I now know it to be the brachialis nerve and then it would pop and all the tension would release and my pec would kind of spasm and I'd feel this shooting sensation down my arm into my fingers. Obviously some strange nerve issues going on, but you just start to get a glimpse of how a seemingly fairly innocuous postural issue is really starting to have deep-rooted consequences for the rest of my body. Now fast forward to when I was 19 years old in 2018 and I got sick with chronic fatigue syndrome after having gone down with a virus that I picked up at an indoor water park. I already have a video where I document my experience there so I'm not going to go over this again. To keep it concise I didn't talk about it in that original video but throughout my experience having chronic fatigue syndrome I also eventually developed an autoimmune disorder known as mast cell activation syndrome where I would have significant physiological reactions to eating certain foods that would be quite debilitating. But having chronic fatigue syndrome seriously uprooted my life. At this point, I was no longer able to train whatsoever. My symptoms were getting worse and worse and worse as the months went by, to the point that I was spending more than 95% of my time lying in bed all day every day. I lost lots of muscle mass from inactivity and not being able to eat anywhere near as well because of the autoimmune issues I would have with food. And I was getting more and more debilitating brain fog that was even interfering with my ability to engage in intellectual tasks or even just conversing with people. And so I was desperately and rigorously searching everywhere for some kind of cure. 
seeing doctors of all kinds, searching and browsing the internet for any shred of a clue as to why I had such mysterious symptoms with seemingly perfect blood tests. Now, having these health issues at such a young age, of course, nutrition, hormone health, organ health, these were the first culprits on my list and the first port of call for my investigations to try and get my health back on track. Despite still dealing with pretty significant winged scapula, posture was not on my radar whatsoever as the cause of my health issues. There was just no plausible mechanism that would intuitively come to mind between my shoulders being out of position and me having autoimmune reactions and feeling brain fog and fatigue. But that was until I came across some absolutely fascinating case studies that completely changed my perspective on the nature of illness and the body physiologically. You see, there were documented patients who had had severe chronic fatigue and autoimmune issues who had managed to fix their problems by identifying and addressing underlying mechanical issues, aka postural problems. Now, these came in a variety of different forms. Some people had craniocervical instability and had to fix this with surgery. I didn't see anyone talking about winged scapula, but this encouraged me to start putting some work in to correct my winged scapula and to just generally reduce the tension in my muscles, get my spine more aligned, and to take posture seriously as a way to improve my health. Now, at first, the gains to my well-being were pretty marginal. But that was until I started to experiment with my own methods of stretching that just felt like the right thing to do to relieve the uncomfortable sensations in my body. And this really activated some tight and dormant muscle groups in my back that felt like they really needed some activation as well as my pecs, which were very tight also. And so after implementing these, the bad autoimmune reactions I would get to eating pretty much anything reduced significantly by perhaps 50%. This of course is very encouraging, but also very fascinating and intriguing. Could it be the case that general health symptoms like brain fog, fatigue, autoimmune reactions to food, discomfort throughout the body, sinus pressure, feeling really groggy whenever I would wake up, could these things be the result of a mechanical postural issue that had plagued me since early teenage years? After all, the gains I've made to my health have been incredibly significant and I haven't even fixed my winged scapula yet. I've only made some fairly marginal progress towards that. So let me tell you a bit about how I'm stretching and the exercises I'm doing for my winged scapula, just in case anyone has a similar issue. Now, winged scapula is a condition that has various different causes. It can be the result of weak serratus anterior muscles, which are the muscles responsible for the movement of the scapula, the scapula being the shoulder blades. The serratus sits between the shoulder blades and the rib cage, and so are responsible for keeping it positioned properly. In many cases, winged scapula is the result of these muscles being weak compared to muscles like the traps and the lats. And so I engaged in certain exercises to strengthen these muscles. But the exercises that really gave me significant benefit to my health and well-being and improving my brain fog and symptoms to autoimmune problems were the stretches that I was doing. The stretches basically involve pushing my shoulders, my elbows, my arms back as far as possible and kind of pushing my chest and my torso forward whilst also trying to rotate my shoulders backwards to get my shoulder blades into place where they're sitting against my rib cage and not rotated forwards and sticking out. You see, when I engage in these stretches, I feel an immense amount of tension build up in that nerve in my armpit that I was describing. But if I stretch for extended periods with that buildup of tension, I find that after the stretching, my symptoms simply reduce. The brain fog just drains from my head. The uncomfortable clogged sensation throughout my whole body just drains away gradually. After it, I feel much more clear headed and my body feels far more comfortable to inhabit. Now, I'm not sure why why this is the case. The mechanisms behind this improvement are opaque to me, of course. But interestingly, it does relate to a lot of concepts from Eastern medicine. Now, of course, Eastern medicine isn't as rigorous or evidence-based as much of what we have in Western medicine. But I think a lot of their concepts still latch on, albeit not perfectly, to some real patterns in physiology and health. 
They often describe, for example, qi flowing through the body, which means energy. And you want to promote the flow of this qi around your body as much as possible. And that leads to greater health and well-being. I suspect this might be the kind of analysis that one of those practitioners would give as to why my condition improved. But to put this into more concrete physiological terms, perhaps the pinched brachialis nerve is interfering with the sending of signals between the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. Perhaps when I'm doing the stretching, I'm increasing the blood flow around my upper body, around my spinal cord and to my brain, which could potentially affect brain fog. Perhaps the lack of blood flow to the brain is partly responsible to this. Furthermore, having a pinched nerve or having seriously tight muscles can put your body into a chronic state of inflammation, which of course, when you have masso activation syndrome, this could lead to the triggering of mast cells dumping more chemicals into your bloodstream, hence leading to more severe reactions. And so when I improve my posture and stretch the relevant muscles, perhaps free the trapped nerve somewhat, this allows for better blood flow and in turn reduces some inflammation. In addition, the lymphatic system, which fairly recently was discovered to also operate within the brain itself as well as the body, aids in draining toxins and fluids from various areas of the body. And having pinched nerves, incredibly tight muscles could very well interfere with its function. And so doing these stretches, doing these mobility exercises can improve lymph function and so help with things like inflammation and brain fog. Now, there's another fascinating part of human physiology that I began to learn about as a result of my investigations to try and improve my own health. And that is the vagus nerve, which is a component of the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the part of the nervous system that deals with relaxation after a kind of fight or flight response. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight responses, responsible for getting your body amped up and stressed when the time is right. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for calming your body down when necessary in order to maintain homeostasis. And so the vagus nerve is essentially responsible for promoting relaxation, reducing inflammation, and controlling many of the involuntary functions of your body, like your heart rate, your respiratory rate, your digestion. And it also plays a role in the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin, which are very important for regulating mood, as well as controlling anxiety and stress in general. And so a dysfunctional vagus nerve, as you could see, could be pretty disruptive to your general well-being and functioning. And so how does this relate to a video about posture issues? Well, the vagus nerve is one of the most complex nerves in the body. And it originates in the brainstem and extends all the way down through the neck and through the chest and spinal area down to the abdomen. And so poor posture, you know, slouching forward, rounded shoulders, shoulder blades out of place, a forward head posture, all of these things can lead to compression on the vagus nerve, which in turn reduces vagal tone, which is the term for the general functioning of the vagus nerve. And so this could interfere with the vagus nerve's ability to effectively transmit signals indicating to the body that it needs to relax or any of its other various functions. And so promoting proper functioning of the vagus nerve becomes a priority from the perspective of functioning well and having optimal health. And it seems that very plausibly, poor posture could play a significant role in negatively affecting its function. In fact, there's a medical clinic in the US that very specifically focuses heavily on promoting vagus nerve activity. They heavily stress the importance of proper posture and mechanical issues for negatively affecting the functioning of the vagus nerve. Anyway, that was a massive bombardment of information related to posture and various mechanisms that it can negatively affect your health. But how is that relevant for you at home who doesn't have winged scapula? Well, although many of these mechanisms through which bad posture could negatively affect your health are not concretely demonstrated by rigorous medical literature, I think we can very plausibly see numerous different mechanisms that bad posture can negatively impact our health not just in a very long-term perspective of maybe I'll have a bit of back pain in my old age. No, this is stuff that's directly related to your ability to function, your well-being, your energy levels, your mental health, your digestion, all of these very pressing physiological issues that affect people even in their younger years. 
the self-improvement sphere in the fitness domain is very much focused on getting bigger muscles, getting higher testosterone, perhaps increasing your cardio somewhat too. And these, of course, are good beneficial steps for most people to have a genuine improvement in their life. But posture mobility is utterly neglected. Yeah, what we're seeing here is that it can very profoundly affect our ability to interact in the world, to operate in the world at a high level. So the message I want to convey with this video is please do not neglect your posture. Everyone should have a good posture routine, just as much as everyone should have a good general fitness routine and not be sedentary. You should seek to identify any postural issues you have, identify exactly what they are, and then seek to rectify them. Most people watching this video, even if they don't have a very specific postural issue like I do, likely have a problem with rounded shoulders and uh, a rounded forward upper spine, thoracic spine specifically. Whilst we might not have concrete evidence of how these types of things negatively affect health, it's generally a good heuristic to see the body as an interconnected system. And so problems in one aspect of the system, namely the musculoskeletal system, can very plausibly and probabilistically have knock-on effects on the other systems of the body, the nervous system, the immune system, the lymphatic system, etc.